Hey guys, this is Thomas Knapp with Financial Empowerment, and this video is all about scholarships that you can apply for that are due in the month of March. So hopefully it's before the month of March while you're watching this, and you have some time to prepare these applications so that you don't miss the deadlines. Some big, some small scholarships, all available for you to apply for the month of March. So let's jump right in. Hey guys, this is Thomas Knapp with Financial Empowerment, and in this video, a 500 to 750 word essay could win you a $1,000 scholarship. So let's check it out. Here we have Money Key is offering this scholarship. It is celebrating academic achievement by awarding $1,000 to the winners of the Key Thinkers Scholarship. Now, they do have some past winners here. We're gonna scroll right past that. And they have the objective here. We're actually gonna skip over that for now and go to some of the details. So what do you need to know to be eligible? Well, you have to be at least 18 years of age. You have to be a US citizen or permanent resident. You have to be enrolled as a full-time student as a post-secondary institution, including an accredited college university or a trade school, which is nice. They don't always offer trade school scholarships and you have to have a cumulative gpa of at least 3.0 uh, it does say incoming post-secondary students are eligible so coming down here when is it due so you can actually apply in the spring or the fall so the deadlines are either march 31st or september 30th all depending on when you're applying for the scholarship so the application here you can fill out your first last name email mobile street address etc etc down here the area of study your diploma your year of enrollment all of these nice things and then your cumulative gpa now here is the essay that you're actually going to be submitting your uh, scholarship for so it says what does financial responsibility mean to you and what steps should students take to plan their budget so maybe you've never thought about a budget maybe this is an opportunity for you to think through what that might be like but it says here please note uh, the essay must be in English. It must have a minimum of 500 words or a maximum of 750. The essay content must be original and not infringe on any third party rights, including but not limited to copyright or trademarks. And the essay submissions must not contain any foul or hateful language. So here you go. Enter your essay below. So 500 to 750 words addressing this question. Put that right here. Read the terms and conditions if you need to uh, specify all that stuff and bam, hit submit and you're done. So there you go. Pretty straightforward application here. Just fill out this question with this content there in the essay. And as long as you meet this eligibility here, then you're good to go. So 500, 750 words, short and sweet, a thousand dollar scholarship for college. Next, this scholarship could win you $10,000. $10,000 is nothing to sneeze at now. This is simply for submitting a greeting card. That's right, a greeting card. So you get to design a greeting card and it's just a picture. Now you can add some, some words to it if you want and we'll get into the details here, but submitting a greeting card, you could win $10,000. Now who's offering this scholarship? The Gallery Collection. And if we actually continue down here on their page, it says this is the 15th annual Create a Greeting Card $10,000 scholarship. And they say plus win $1,000 for your school and then you can submit your entry. We're gonna go ahead and click right there and this takes us to the entry page. So enter here, now this says this is what's required. Check if you're homeschooled, you're gonna enter some personal information, student ID, et cetera, email, all that stuff. Getting it down here and then boom, you're gonna choose a file and you're gonna upload it. Now this is a maximum upload file size of 15 megabytes. Now some other places on their website actually says two not 15 so just pay attention to that uh, but this says max file upload 15 megabytes so there you go we can follow that and say you're not a robot and submit now here it says that you are going to submit an original photo artwork or computer graphic for the front of a greeting card the deadline is march 2nd it does open up in june so you can start submitting it as early as june if you don't win when you submit this march 2nd category here then it's not that long until June. It's a few months. So basically, if you submit something in March, you don't win in that submission, then create some new designs. And then in June, pick one of your best ones and submit it. Then you might win $10,000 in next year's uh, win. Now it does say the winners are gonna be announced on or about May 13th. And there is a reason you want to submit it earlier, this June, closer to June 7th, and I'll get to that in just a second. You do have to be 14 years or older, and you have to be in high school, college, or university, or again, homeschooled, and it will be decided by voting. This is the part why it might, it actually might benefit you to submit it sooner than later. So let's go ahead and hit on the scholarship FAQs. Now I'm gonna skip through some of this. What designs are permitted? Uh, they say basically it just has to be original art. 
uh, but it will be submitted as a JPEG. So they want to make sure that you are not submitting something like a stock photo you found online or anything like that, which I mean, obviously they're wanting something original. So to just pick an, uh, pick an image offline that's already a stock photo, like that's not really original. So they probably wouldn't want that one anyways. Should there be words? They basically say like, no, not really. And they might actually even add words to your card at a later date. So you're just submitting the image. You don't need to worry about putting words in it or anything else. Uh, what themes are acceptable? So basically they're saying like, well, just themes like that we already kind of do. So they got Christmas cards, they got anniversary cards, they say here a uh, birthday card. So all that kind of stuff is stuff that you can submit to them. They do say here what size. This is the card size, the five and a half by seven and seven eighths. That's the card size. But it says here like you don't necessarily have to submit it the exact size. That's just what the size of the final image is going to be. Uh, so here, who is eligible? We kind of already talked about this, but basically if you're in high school or if you're in college and they do specify like you have to be a legal resident of the 50 United States, but also uh, District of Columbia, American Samoa, Guam, Commonwealth, and other places, Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, etc. So it's not just the 50 United States. How old do you have to be? You do have to be 14 years of age and it will be judged. This is the part where I was talking about where it might actually benefit you in order to submit it early. So they do say that basically they're going to create a panel of judges that's going to look for these things. Overall aesthetic appeal, quality of execution, creativity and originality, successful incorporation of design elements, appropriateness for use as a greeting card, attractiveness to their collection and specific like who their consumers are and sustainability as a design, all that sort of stuff. Now, what about the prize? If the pri if you win, then the money is going to be sent to your school. Any remainder of the scholarship will be paid directly to the winner. And if you are a minor, meaning uh, under 18, then it'll go to your parents uh, or your guardian. Now, if you don't win, they can still buy your card. Like, so you might say they liked your card, but there was somebody else that they liked better. It says that in the event that we do decide to publish a non-winning entry, it says then they're just going to compensate the student in the usual and customary amount as they would compensate a regular contributing artist, which basically means you're an artist, right? Like now you're a regularly uh, contributing artist. You get, are just getting paid. You submit a greeting card, you're getting paid. You can make greeting cards and just submit greeting cards and just get paid. Like you don't, it doesn't have to be for this scholarship specifically. So if you're an artist, greeting cards might be something that you can get into to start to kind of make a little side money. So, you know, just something to think about. So that's what they'll do if you didn't win. Now down here, this is what I was referencing earlier. How does the voting work? This is every month, our judges will put 100 entries for voting on the site. And then the top 10 entries with the most votes for each session will automatically move on to the finalist round. And then our judging team, they can, they have reserved like basically like a trump card. They have one save available for each month. And it says that'll allow them to pick a design that's outside of the top 10 in the voting uh, to move on to the finalist round. Now, what does this mean for you specifically? Referencing if you were to submit these cards early, like in June or July, whatever the date was when they opened the contest, well, then you're going to start to get put maybe these hundred uh, greeting card options that get voted for. You're going to start getting put in that round to start getting voted for that month. So you might get put in the round in August and be sent directly to the finalist round or the September month. So now that we're getting closer to the deadline, more people are submitting their greeting cards. There's going to be maybe more competition for that month. But if you're one of the early months, there's going to likely be less people who submitted a greeting card that month. So the competition is lower. Your chances of being the winner to go to the finalist round is higher. That's how scholarship applications work. You want to benefit from lower competition and higher probability of winning. So earlier submissions for this are likely to give you a higher probability of winning. So just keep that in mind. And then we're going to continue down here to the last part that I wanted to talk about. The finalist voting round has the top 10 entries from each month's voting session, along with any saves from the judges that selected that. So the top five entries with the most votes, along with five entries that the judging team selects, will make up the official top 10 finalists. And the judging team will select the winner from those top 10 finalists. So that's what you need to know in order to win the scholarship. So simply follow these rules, follow these criteria, submit some sort of original art, original work, original design uh, that you can do. Submit it to win a scholarship up to $10,000 if they select you to win as their greeting card. Or you may have made one good enough not to win the scholarship, but they may still like it. And then you can essentially start a side business of selling greeting card artwork. So 
definitely take advantage of this opportunity to win $10,000 for college from this scholarship. Next. Now you can click the link in the description I have for a book called The Ultimate Scholarship Book. That contains way more scholarships than are in any of these kinds of videos because they go through very specific and they're indexed on different kinds of content and specific to you types of ways to look up that information for what scholarships you might be eligible for. So I definitely recommend that. You can find the link down in the description to the Ultimate Scholarship book. Next, this essay is a little bit, uh, you know, not like super upbeat uh, kind of a content. So basically this is if you have experienced yourself or a loved one has experienced uh, being diagnosed with cancer, then this organization wants you to write an essay about that experience and the winning essays will win $1,000. Uh, the essay will be up to 1,500 words. So again, if you're uh, willing and able to uh, write about your experience with cancer, up to 1,500 words, then you could win $1,000. Now, let's get into who is offering this scholarship. So they have the Cancer Unwrapped Teen Writing Contest. Let's go through this website here. Uh, now, this is with Cancer Pathways. So you can uh, look that up. But uh, if we scroll down here, it says learning about a cancer diagnosis, your own or that of a loved one can cause a storm of emotions and everyone experiences it differently. Uh, we want to know what this experience was like for you. Did you feel angry, sad, lonely, uh, or maybe something you didn't expect? What happened in your life and did it change you or your perspectives? Um, Wow, I'm, <laughs> I actually have experienced cancer in my life, so I didn't really expect to uh, get emotional in any way. But uh, my grandfather uh, passed away from melanoma cancer, and my father uh, has cancer, or not has cancer. He actually uh, it, it beat his cancer, but he had cancer when I was younger, um, kidney cancer. And so uh, I have multiple experiences in my life with cancer, so I don't know if you do as well. But uh, so, yes, as we continue through here, if you are uh, willing or able to kind of write about that, it says... We invite you to submit a short essay about your experience with cancer for the opportunity to win cash prizes. Since the contest began in 2006, they've had over 6,100 submissions and they've handed out over $175,000 in prize money to teens. Uh, I mean, to some degree, the fact that there were 6,100 submissions, that many people, and obviously there are way more than that that are affected by cancer, but that many people wrote essays about their experience. Man, I'm just... <laughs> Golly, I just feel like I, I have to just say I'm sorry for anybody else who has experienced that diagnosis in themselves or others. Um, beyond my personal family, I, there's a lot of people that I know that have experienced cancer and some have overcome it, some have not. So, uh, man, wow, this just uh, it's going to affect everybody differently. But that's the whole point. Right. And uh, getting the, the words of the experience on paper. Um, writing that out, almost a therapeutic experience. It might be something worth doing, even if you never submit this as an essay, just to kind of get your feelings and emotions uh, about that experience out. Um, being able to feel your true feelings, not feeling like you have to be strong for somebody or in the moment, uh, but just an opportunity for you to just be honest about how this experience has affected you. Putting that down on paper uh, and then submitting it for this uh, contest, you could win $1,000. It says each one has been heartfelt, honest, heartfelt, and unique. So you can click right here to submit your essay. Uh, we're going to continue down here to go through some of the uh, deadlines and Colin test eligibility. So it's open to teens in the United States in grades 9 through 12. So if you're in high school, basically, don't exceed 1,500 words. And they say these are things that are not eligible. They don't want poems, uh, essays about a pet, or something fictional. The deadline, again, is March 4th. The prizes are $1,000 awarded to the winner. And if you do win, they want you to submit this, an IRS form, a W-9 form. And then uh, you will be invited, if you win, to a virtual reception, and you're going to be asked to read your essay. So you'll get an opportunity not just to have submitted the essay, but if you win, then other people are going to hear you present that story. So um, that's pretty powerful. Continuing through here, we're going to uh, look at the judging. So basically, there's a multi-step review process to select the winners. Uh, the judges are an esteemed group of individuals that are cancer survivors, authors, influencers, politicians, business and community leaders, artists, and even professional athletes. So uh, again, a whole host of people. Cancer is not really uh, discriminatory. It affects everybody. So uh, tons of uh, diversity in that judging panel. Now, if we scroll down here, it says that they do have some writing tips. So if you uh, want to select that, then you can hit go now. And you can even hit go now here to read past winners, uh, winning essays to kind of get an idea of what they've done in the past and what people have submitted. Uh, so again, if you want to just scroll back up to the top, 
and hit submit, all it's going to do is repeat that stuff that we just went over. Same information, same content. So uh, that's the opportunity where you will actually fill out the, your, your personal contact information and then submit your essay that you've written. So once again, if you can answer this essay and if you are eligible, I just want to say I'm sorry that, that you've gone through this. But you can turn that experience into an opportunity to win $1,000 to help you go to college, help you pay for college. So a 1,500-word essay about your experience with cancer can win you $1,000. So definitely check out this scholarship. Moving on. This scholarship, I'm sorry, gentlemen, this is all about female empowerment. So if you are here, before you click off, go ahead and hit that like button and then go watch something else. But the ladies that are here, this is all about female empowerment. If you are a woman in high school or college and you want to be the boss, this is for you, $2,000 for the winning applicant. So let's jump right in. So if we look on the website here, this is uh, the Go Skills website. They say here, join the ranks of inspiring female founders. And again, if we go to the top, it's Go Skills is who's offering this. And they say, hashtag be the boss. So if we scroll down here, this is a scholarship for women who want to be the boss. It says, look, guys, this is business, nothing personal. Let's talk numbers, just cold, hard facts. I'm going to go ahead and read some of these. Uh, because I think it is interesting. First, first of all, it says, have you heard female CEOs in the Fortune 1000 drive three times the returns as S&P 500 enterprises run predominantly by men? Well, isn't that interesting? Uh, it says again here that only 18% of the startups have a female founder. And it says here of the 114 billion in funding given to these startups, only 6% of it makes its way to a female founded startup. So we're trying to basically, again, empower women here to be the boss. And they say, did you know that women-owned businesses added 340,000 new jobs between 20, 2007 and 2015, while men-owned businesses actually cut 1.2 million? So women-owned businesses are actually adding jobs to the workforce. Uh, how about this one? It says, among the most successful companies, men begin their businesses with six times as much capital as women do. So again, it looks like women here are able to be a little bit more scrappy because they don't have as much opportunity at this point. Hopefully we change that. Uh, I don't know if you how much you guys know, but I have two young daughters. So I'm trying to create a world that I want them to be able to be successful in as well. And it says here that less than 5% of venture capital dollars go to woman-led businesses. So they say, we believe them to be true. That's why we are eager to offer a scholarship exclusively for women who want to execute on their business ideas. And so then here we say, as a female founder, I want to encourage other young women who are thinking about starting a business uh, to just give it a go. It doesn't matter if you fail. It, uh, you'll learn so much and gain so much more experience than starting at the bottom of the ladder at some large corporate. And that is true. And if you discover that startup life isn't for you, you'll still stand out from the other applicants when you re-enter the workforce. It's a win-win. And so I do, I agree with that. Uh, you, by all means, start a business and fail. You're gonna learn a lot and you can either put that into your next business or like she just said, then that's gonna make you be an even better candidate for applying for a job in the corporate world. You might even be able to jump overhead uh, past some of the entry level positions into some middle management stuff because of this experience you gained and even attempting to open and start a business. So uh, you're gonna gain tons of experience through trying to start a business and who knows, you might actually be successful, <laughs> right? She says, what I love about startups, autonomy over your work, being able to influence the direction of a company or product, pulling together resources and working as a team to make something valuable out of nothing. I also want to encourage more women to get leadership positions and strive for the C-suite and board level roles, whether in a startup or a multinational corporate. Advice I give to young entrepreneurs is to follow your gut and surround yourself with the smartest people you know. And this is by the co-founder here of Go Skills. And so with this, they say, here's the nitty gritty. Here's the details. Here's what you need to know about this scholarship. Who's eligible? Any female high school or college student who wants to start her own online business. So there's a few things there. You have to be not only in high school or college, but you have to want to start a business. And later on, you're going to actually have to have a business plan. So some details for all that stuff, but we'll get there, all right? It's for $2,000 for this scholarship. How many scholarships are they giving? Two scholarships every year, and that's because they have two deadlines. So in the fall, the deadline is September 15th, and in the spring, the deadline is March 15th. So uh, keep an eye on that. And then they say here again that you're going to find out that on uh, October 15th or April 15th if you're the winner. So definitely keep that in mind. How will you know if you've won, whether you win or don't win? They're going to let you know all applicants via email on the announcement date. So another announcement date, October 15th, April 15th. Now, here's some of their past winners. We're going to scroll past the past winners. And then here's where you can actually apply. So it says your name, 
contact email, phone number, school, social links. If you have any, again, you're starting a, a business, you might have some social media stuff that you want to uh, promote. And then tell us about yourself. So two to three sentences here. They say, tell us all the reasons you're scared of starting your business. What's holding you back? That's what they want to know. Who's your female boss role model and why? So who do you look up to? And then anything else you'd like to add. And then here's where it's a business plan link. They say, go ahead, send us a link to your business plan for an online business. Include two to three sentences or more if you need to on. And these are the things, a problem, a solution, the market opportunity, your competition, the business model, the go-to-market plan and a team. And you're going to upload this document to Dropbox, Google Drive, etc. And then just make sure that the document can be viewed by people who have the link. And then you're going to submit the link. And that way they can just look up your business plan on your Google Drive or whatever, certify that it is your ideas, and then you submit the application. So that's pretty exciting. Oh, you have to have your business plan, put it together, but you can win $2,000 to help you pay for college. And then uh, you can even be working on your business even while you're in college. You don't even have to start after you graduate. You can start now. Um, now, what I want to highlight is some of the things if we scroll down here further, they do say that they are going to consider your information, your proposal is confidential, but they're not responsible for any proprietary information or intellectual property included in it. They also want to highlight that the winner will be notified on these dates, which we already talked about, and they will post the winner's name and a short description of the winning business idea on their social media accounts, their monthly newsletter, and in any other forms of media that they choose at a later date. Now, they want to say here that the winner selection is not not based on financial need, GPA, or demographic area. That's important because uh, you'll notice that they don't ask for any of that, right? None of that's even in part of the application. So uh, it's not based on your financial need or your GPA or any of that kind of stuff. They just want to look at your ideas for business. And then like last year at the very bottom, they say scholarship entries are only accepted online through this web page. Entrants must submit a complete entry with all required information and any false or misleading information. The application will be disqualified without notification. So definitely don't try to be misleading in any way. Don't try to, you know, fake anything or steal somebody else's idea. Golly, create your own ideas here. Um, but this is an opportunity for women who are interested in starting your own business. $2,000 scholarship and the opportunity to work through and flesh out some of these ideas for this scholarship application that might actually even kickstart you into starting that business that you've been thinking about. So super cool opportunity. I want to encourage more women just like they are to get into these founder roles. I totally want to encourage anybody that's interested in starting a business to go ahead and just jump in. Sink or swim, you're gonna gain experience. You're gonna learn a ton from the opportunity and you're gonna continue to change the world one woman founded company at a time. Next, if you can write a 1500 word essay, then you can win $5,000. So this scholarship we're gonna go over today, grand prize is $5,000. You don't wanna miss it. Now let's jump in. So here we have the AFA Teens Alzheimer's Awareness Scholarship. Now, what's cool about this scholarship is it doesn't have to necessarily be a family member that has Alzheimer's, but you're gonna write an essay of 1500 word maximum describing the impact of Alzheimer's disease or another dementia-related illness on themselves. It doesn't have to just be Alzheimer's. It can be another dementia-related illness. It can be your family or your community. So it could just be someone that you know, maybe not somebody that is in your family directly. So just write about, it says what they've learned from it. Um, so how it affected them and what you've learned. If you do this and they choose you as the grand prize winner, you could win $5,000. All right. I think $5,000 is a pretty good award for a 1500 word scholarship. Now, what's cool about this, though, and they say down here for the 2022 contest, which is this year, it says the deadline is March 1st. So you have you know some time to get it in still, depending, obviously, on when you're watching this video. But if we scroll down here, it says congratulate the 2021 winners. So we look through here. It says here's the first place, the $5,000 scholarship. But if we continue down here, they have second prize for $3,500. They have a third prize for $2,500, and it actually keeps going. There's another $2,500 prize, $1,500 prize, $1,000 prize. Here's $650, $550, $525, $500, and then they even have an honorable mention where you could still win $400. It's pretty cool that it's not just the five grand. Uh, it tears all the way down to four, and you can see all these names, right? Look at all these winners. So like, it's not just like, hey, I write an essay and I'm either win 5,000 or I win nothing. A ton of people here have won these prizes. So definitely worth putting your name in the hat and uh, seeing if you can win something. So all you're gonna do is say, click here to register to fill out your application. They're gonna ask for some personal information on that next page. 
and they're going to basically want you to enter your address, your email, all that sort of stuff. And then you're going to click go to the next page. And that's where you're going to submit your essay and all the other documents that you need. In addition to the essay, you do have to submit a transcript. But again, they tell you all that stuff. It's all part of the next page. So 1500 word essay could win you up to five thousand dollars you don't want to miss out on this one and the next one this scholarship is an interesting one today for two reasons first of all you can win five hundred and three dollars not five hundred five hundred and three dollars for this scholarship and it's also not for the traditional college route this scholarship is if you're planning to pursue vocational or trade programs or degrees. So this is a pretty cool opportunity. Let's jump right in here. This is the Mary Lynn J. Palmer Memorial Scholarship. And I found this on bold.org, another place that you can go to look for scholarships yourself. But let's kind of scroll down and see what this is all about. So again, here, it's the Memorial Scholarship. It's $503 for the winner. It is currently open. So you can apply there. It says the application deadline is March 13th of 2022. And if we scroll down here, the eligibility is you're pursuing a trade vocational degree and you're a current high school senior or an undergraduate student. It says here that our mom, Marilyn Palmer, was a believer in the possible. And then it kind of gives a little bit of her story. She was a wife, basketball coach, a mother of four boys, the eternal optimist with a keen sense of gratitude for the world. As her kids grew older, she became increasingly involved in tutoring and ended her working career as a census taker. She was truly an American girl, thrifty, clever, who always found a way to make things work out for the best, no matter the circumstances. So in order to honor her great legacy and the life that she lived, our family would like to offer this Marilyn J. Palmer scholarship to one American student who, instead of pursuing the ordinary undergraduate route, is interested in taking their studies to a trade vocational school to harness their skills in a specific field. And so to apply, you're going to write about uh, what being an American means to you. Then down here, it says uh, 400 to 600 words. What does being an American mean to you? You can hit apply now. And uh, also, if you want to scroll down here, it has past winners from before. So the winning application, here's where they're going to school. And you can actually read their uh, submission there. And that can help give you an idea. If you want to just take a look and see what somebody else submitted, looking at the past winner can help you have an idea of what you might need to submit in order to win this scholarship yourself. I think this scholarship is cool because not everybody is pursuing trades. But to be honest, you can go into a trade and make way more money than you can going the traditional college route. So, you know, less time in school, maybe spending less on uh, your actual education and sometimes even getting paid while you learn as an apprentice. And then ultimately, you're going to make more money on the back end uh, as somebody working in a trade than somebody who went to college and graduated with student loan debt and now is getting a job that's paying them way less than they thought and all that sort of stuff. So it's like, you know, I think I think trades is a direction that's going to really start to blow up over the next few years. And I really think it kind of needs to in order for those industries to have the necessary workforce to service the communities that we live in. So just consider this as an option. Think about trade school. Maybe you hadn't thought about trade school before. Consider what that might look like for you, a, a life working as a trade. And next, it's up to $5,000 a year per academic year, which means you could actually win maybe up to $25,000 if you stayed through a fifth year. If it, you're a fifth year senior, you can win $5,000 every year through that that fifth year so five thousand a year twenty five thousand total this is a pretty cool scholarship now it is specifically for people in the chemical sciences field so i know a ton of people just clicked off the video and that's okay if you're still here uh then you're going to want to be interested in how you can win this scholarship now this scholarship is called the acs scholars program so let's take a quick look here at what it's all about they say here over a million dollars in scholarship funds are awarded to 300 plus students annually so the other thing they want to highlight here is that it's for students from historically underrepresented groups in the chemical sciences so this underrepresented groups uh if that's you know they clarify what that means here in a second so uh, and here they say at the five thousand dollars per academic year now it does say the number of awards and the award amounts are determined by the school year demonstration of financial need and available funding so later on they actually say that it could be anywhere from one thousand up to five thousand per year so that kind of depends on the fan financial aid part that refers to you and your specific situation but now here they do have a video you can watch though so in addition to this if you want to watch more information about the scholarship now this is like a 49 minute video so i probably you know, if you have 49 minutes, go for it. But I know a lot of people uh, just kind of want to get started and jump in. So it's up to you. Here's another short video that you can watch about the scholars program. But then down here, it says interested in becoming an ACS scholar. And we're going to go ahead and click apply. So this brings us to here how to apply for the ACS scholars program. Now, here's the timeline. So uh, November 1st, applications open. 
March 1st is when the applications close. So that's the due date. That's what you got to pay attention to. Now, May 15th, that's when you're going to find out. Results are announced on the scholars, and then you're going to actually receive your scholarship check here on the 15th. So that's the timeline that we got to pay attention to. Am I eligible? So the first thing here is U.S. citizens or legal permanent U.S. residents. It does say you have to be African American, Black, Hispanic, Latino, or American Indian. And it says see below for more details. So we'll get there in a second. Graduating high school seniors or college through uh, junior. It does say again, seniors in college can apply if you have a fifth year. Obviously, if you're a senior who's about to graduate, there's no more academics after that if you're graduating. So only if you have a fifth year. But so that's what I was saying is you can win potentially up to $25,000 if you win $5,000 every single year. So just keep that in mind. Coming down here. They do say that your intended majors are already majoring in chemistry, biochemistry, chemical engineering, chemical technologies, other chemistry related sciences, and they want you to be pursuing or planning to pursue a career in some chemistry related science. And again, they have kind of a chart below that we'll get to that we'll talk about that more. They want you to be, if you are a full-time student in high school, again, your high school senior, you can, or attending an accredited college or community college. So again, you can also be in community college. So that's helpful and then demonstrating that you have a high academic achievement, so a 3.0 GPA or higher. They want you to select your race or ethnicity that you most identify with, and you can select other if you need to give more. So here they actually kind of define, which is nice. They define what this means. So what is what does it mean to be Hispanic or Latino for this application specifically? So uh, a person of Mexican, Puerto Rican, Cuban, Central, South American culture or origin, regardless of race, etc. So they talk about the American Indians, Alaska Natives, uh, native Hawaiian or native Pacific Islander, African-American black, or if you're more than one race. So they define that and they tell you where they got these definitions from here. So I think that's pretty cool that they do that. And then here's the example majors. Uh, this isn't necessarily an exhaustive list, but we got all of these to do chemistry, biochemistry, all those. I'm not going to read them all to you, but you can check out this list. So all of these things, it's a pretty, pretty big list. And then example careers that you could uh, be planning to go into chemistry, biochemistry, et cetera, et cetera, professor, patent lawyer, science journalist, et cetera. If you're pursuing a degree in pharmacy or nursing, then you're not eligible for the scholarship. So continuing on from there, now it says the selection process and the award amount. So let's click on this. And here they say that it is going to be a committee, uh, professionals in academia and the chemistry industry and some ACS scholar alumni. This committee reviews all the completed eligible applications to determine the best overall candidate. So again, it's not necessarily just like, hey, I write an essay or anything else. They kind of take the whole package, what you're planning to pursue, what degree, what school, uh, your academic performance, and then you either qualify uh, to become a scholar or not. So it's kind of interesting how it works. This is where it was saying, you know, a thousand to five thousand dollars per academic year is what they're looking at. Required documents. You do have to submit a, an official transcript and they kind of explain it here, but the difference between an official and an unofficial, you may have heard both those terms. Unofficial transcript is like you can print it and scan it or fax it and email it to them or something or submit it, like uploading it online. Official transcripts though, and they say this here, they have to be sent directly, sent directly from the school, either in a sealed envelope or by transcript clearinghouse too. And then here's where you're gonna send it. You can't send it yourself. You have to go through the school they have to officially, that's the difference between unofficial and official transcripts, send this letter. And then uh, you do have to have two letters of recommendation. So they talk about that and how to submit that. And then over here, you do have to submit a copy of your uh, SAR, your student aid report. And that is going to be, again, sent uh, via email to scholars at acs.org. And if you don't know what the SAR is, the student aid report, that comes from filing the FAFSA. So if you haven't filed the FAFSA yet, you need to file the FAFSA and that will give you this SAR student aid report, and that's what you will submit to them. Continuing down here after that, uh, so it says here, obviously, if you're a high school student, they do specify like, oh, well, what if you don't know where you wanna go to school yet? Well, they say, don't worry about it. If you are chosen as a scholar, then they'll ask for that school information later. So that's good to know. And then again, you do have to send your official transcripts. And then here, if you are an undergrad, you obviously can apply if you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, or a senior, if you plan to attend for a fifth year. And then it's the same thing. If you're transferring, don't worry about it. Just send in the application and all the details can be worked out later. College freshmen, they want you to submit college and high school transcripts for this scholarship. So then here you are ready to apply. If you've already started the application, then you can hit this. If you're new, then click new. So you just wanna be able to submit all of this content, what you're planning to do, what degree, what school, all that sort of stuff, your transcripts, and then you could be eligible to become a scholar, win anywhere from $1,000 to $5,000, but it's renewable every year. 
This is way better than just winning a one-off $1,000 scholarship, $5,000 every year. So definitely submit the information if you qualify, if you're one of these underrepresented groups in the chemistry industry. Next. And I wanted to bring your attention down to the description for a free PDF that you can download today that has all these scholarships listed and they are clickable links with descriptions and snapshots of the requirements and the specifics you need to know to quickly go through this list, find the ones that you qualify for and start that application process today. So check that out in the description. Next. This is a $1,500 scholarship. You can win $1,500 with an essay. So right off the bat, simply writing an essay will win you some money. However, before we get too far into it, I want to say this is probably a topic that you don't just know a lot about off the top of your head. Likely it's not something you're going to just be like, oh yeah, totally know about that. So my recommendation is that you approach this scholarship application as though it's a writing assignment for school that could win you $1,500, right? As opposed to writing uh, the same type of style of paper and getting just a grade, this one could win you some money. So I think if you approach it with the mindset of like, okay, maybe I don't know a lot about the topic specifically from the get-go, but I can do a little bit of research, learn a bit, a little of information, then I can write a really good essay that could win me $1,500. And recognizing once again, competition, scholarship competition is about trying to apply for scholarships that other people aren't applying for because less competition, less people applying means you're not competing against as many people. Most people are probably going to see this scholarship, see the topic of the scholarship and go, nope. And so because they don't know a lot about the topic, they're already going to write it off. They're already going to say, no, I'm not going to do that. And so you don't have to compete against them because they've already decided no. That being said, let's explain or let's jump into this. This is the ABPA Harrington Arthur Memorial $1,500 scholarship essay competition. Ah, that is a mouthful. All right, but it is, the uh, the deadline here is for March 15th of 2022. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of skip through this part for now, and I'm just gonna go with the topic. Here's the topic. The essay topic for 2021-22 school year is, how can a water purveyor protect their potable water distribution system from pollution and or contamination due to unprotected cross connections and backflow? Discuss methods and procedures a water purveyor in your area has implemented to protect their distribution system from these hazards to ensure safe drinking water is supplied to all their end users. Wow, what a mouthful. <laughs> but I want to highlight that most people are going to get to this website, go to that thing and be like, huh, I'm not doing that. Hold on, don't just jump off. $1,500. $1,500. You get assignments at school that you know nothing about all the time, right? They say, hey, you have to do this writing assignment, this research paper on this topic. It's usually a topic you've never heard of or don't know much about or whatever. You have to do some research and you this can win you $1,500. So don't just write it off because you're like, I don't know about water purveying and backflow. So what? Learn a little bit, right? So don't give up on this scholarship because it's something you might not know about. All right, so we're gonna jump back in. Uh, I'm gonna go back up here for a second. So this talks about backflow prevention to help and ensure safe drinking water. Uh, obviously safe drinking water is important. So it's not like this stuff doesn't matter. Backflow prevention is designed to prevent dangerous and sometimes even fatal bacteria, chemicals, and other harmful agents from entering water, local water supply systems. So it might be something worth learning about because you're gonna actually learn about your local water supply system. And maybe you'll learn about how safe or unsafe the water coming into your own home is. Maybe this will inform a decision to maybe put in a whole home water purifier or at least not drink water out of the tap and use the you know water filtration system in your in your fridge or whatever the case may be. So anyways, this could be something interesting to actually learn about for your situation. Uh, we're going to go ahead down here and click on rules and guidelines. So if we click on that, that's going to take us to this website, which gives us the official competition rules and guidelines. So it does say that you have to be a, a high school student age 13 to 18 as of December 31st of 2021. You have to be currently attending public, private, or parochial school or be homeschooled, but it does say you are not required to be college bound. Now, if we come down here again, it says that uh, there will be $1,500 scholarship presented to the winner. The other thing is that it's basically gonna, if you see here, they're gonna actually send the money into a 529 account unless it's being sent directly to a school. So if you already do are going to an accredited school, like going to a university, then they'll send it to the school. Otherwise, they'll just put it and send it in your name to your 529 account if you have one or they can establish one. So that's interesting. Now, if we come down here, here's the specifics, right? So we have an essay that is 700 to 1200 words. 
that you're going to submit. And again, the deadline here, March 15th. And they say down here that the winner will be selected by a panel of judges no later than April 30th. So uh, April 30th is when you will they will finish and let you know. And if you do not respond to the scholarship notification within 14 days after being notified, then an alternate will be selected. Here are the essay competition guidelines. So this is interesting because they say there's no set wording, but in order to give proper credit, they kind of give examples of like, so here, if your essay was all your own stuff, then you just say, I certify it's all my own work. But if it was like, say entire, if the whole essay was heavily based on a certain author or work, it says this essay is heavily based on the work of whoever, or, you know, Mr. or Mrs. whatever. So that's kind of what they want you to do. Going down here, you're going to have the body of the essay has to be no fewer than 700 words, but no greater than 1200 words in length. You will have to submit the essay electronically as a PDF, and it will include a title page, essay page, bibliography references, and the applicant's biography. This is again, where this is where once again, I was saying like, if you approach this like, oh, my teacher gave me an assignment, then all this stuff is easy peasy. If you approached it from, I just wanna sit down, write something that's out of my head, you know, write a 250 word essay and submit it to win 500 bucks. If you approach it with that mindset, you're going to see this and go like, ah, that's too much work. If you approach it from the, oh, $1,500 to like do an assignment for school, piece of cake. I'm totally going to do that. So just keep that in mind. It's again, I think it's a mindset thing that's going to, it's going to set you apart here. So we're going to continue to go through here. It talks about all the details for the title page and the, the body. And then it talks about citations for the bibliography page. It does say here that an essay using crowdsource and publicly editable sources such as Wikipedia will be disqualified. <laughs> so do not use Wikipedia as a source. <laughs> and it should contain the following, subject introduction, the body, and the conclusion. Here's some additional ex uh, uh, suggestions that they have. It says, usually essays that employ a variety of sources as news magazines, uh, newspapers, books, uh, government documents and publications from research organizations as they normally carry more weight with the contest judges. So just an idea, you might wanna think about that. Um, and it says, you know, don't necessarily just use the internet as your only source of information. So um, just consider that when you're doing this. But once again, this essay contest about backflow and water safety and that kind of stuff, like just do a little bit of research and write this paper. You can win $1,500 for college. Next. If you can write an essay, you could win $500. And what's cool about this is you can apply more than once throughout the year. There's more opportunities than one. So even if you don't win the first month, you can reapply and reapply all year long until you finally get that $500. Here's the details. So the scholarship here is the Innovation in Education Scholarship. Now, if we scroll down here, it says here, enter for a chance to win our monthly $500 scholarship. So once again, this is a scholarship that's due every single month and it's actually due the same date every single month. So if you do all the criteria and you uh, don't end up winning, starting on the first of the next month, you can apply again. What's cool about this is it gives you an opportunity to kind of hone your skills. Each time you apply, you can improve your essay, you improve your project a little bit more so that every single time you're improving and improving. So eventually you might win this scholarship. Definitely a cool opportunity to uh, be able to apply for something every month. I want you to know it's not just a sweepstakes scholarship. It's not due every month and you just put your name into a hat. You actually write an essay. So there is a way to differentiate yourself each month from other people that are applying. It's not just a sweepstakes. If it was, I wouldn't be recommending it. So let's get into it here if we scroll down. So here they have a few paragraphs kind of just talking about the company, LA Tutors 123. They, they believe in you know, education and creativity for students and all that sort of stuff. So we're gonna scroll through and you can read all that if you want, um, but we're gonna come down here to criteria. So one of the first things is that you must currently be enrolled as a high school or a college university student. So obviously if you're not, um, if you're in middle school or if you're already out of college, like that won't work. But most people watching these videos are in high school or college. So continuing down, you do have to have a GPA of 3.0 uh, at least, and you do have to be a citizen, permanent resident of, or hold a valid student visa in the United States or Canada. So that's important as well. Um, now they say here, this is kind of like the project that you have to do to write the essay on. So it says, you must have designed an innovative project that makes a difference in the lives of others. So it says it could be a website, a series of blogs, an app, a fundraising event, etc. So basically they're just saying you have to have done something to help other people's lives. Be creative about what that means. But the other cool thing about this being something that is a project that you can apply for each month is maybe this first month you're kind of like, oh, I haven't necessarily done anything like that. 
Well, guess what? Do something this month that relates to that, create something that can help the lives of other people, and then write about it for next month. Or even if it takes you a couple months, then write about it in the third month. So because it's due every month, now that you know this exists, if you don't feel like you've done anything to meet this project criteria yet, you can. And what's cool about the idea about creating a project that's going to help other people's lives is that that kind of a project and a story can help you not just with this essay and this contest, but lots of scholarships ask these kinds of questions about like, hey, have you done anything? Community service? How have you given back? Or what's a way that you've impacted the lives of others? So this might just get your mind going like, oh, well, what can I do? to help for this essay, but it'll also help you win other scholarships as well. So keep that in mind when you're thinking of a project that you can create or do that's gonna help the lives of others. So um, getting back into it, we're gonna continue to scroll down to the essay. So you have to write an essay about and describing the goal of the particular project and provide supporting documentation. There is no minimum or max word count or page count. So it kind of gives you a little bit of freedom and leeway there, but I probably, I, I wouldn't say like write a 10 page essay, you know, like somebody still has to read this. So you don't want to make it too long. Getting back into it here, scrolling down originality, the essay idea or creation must be the applicant's original work. So obviously that makes sense. This is what I was talking about, about being due every month. It says that every single month that must be uploaded no later than 1159 on the 20th. So the submission window closes on the 21st, but it will reopen on the 1st at 8 a.m. Again, if you missed it or you didn't apply this month, starting on the first of the next month, you can apply again. And then anytime between the first and the 20th, you can apply. And then if you either don't apply or you do apply and don't win, then on the first of the next month, you can apply again. So just kind of stick it on the calendar at the first of each month, reapply for this thing and you could win $500. As you improve this ability to write these essays, you can use this to improve your other essays for scholarships that might be more than $500. So just keep that in mind. Scrolling down here, it does say previous winners are not eligible to reapply. So that's why I'm saying you can apply until you win. It does say that they will contact you via email and you must respond within five days of the date of the email to accept the award. So if they don't hear from you, um, then another recipient will be selected. So you definitely want to make sure that if you win, you're checking your email, or if you apply, you're checking your email because if you don't reply to the winning email within five days, somebody else is gonna win and you spend all that time, finally won and then, ah. Uh, and odds are, I mean, I can't guarantee this, but odds are if they did this contest and they selected a winner and they contacted that winner and that winner never replied, then if you submit again the next month because you technically didn't win because they couldn't get a hold of you, at that point, even if you resubmit, they might be like, well, that guy won last time and we tried to get a hold of him and they didn't answer. So maybe we'll just skip them. So you might, you might miss your opportunity. I can't guarantee that, but I'm just talking about how people work. Uh, that might do it that way. So keep that in mind. Try not to miss it if you did win. So here's the actual application. First and last name, email, phone number, high school and college name. And then down here, you are going to have to upload not only the essay, but also a letter of recommendation. This is that supporting documents they were talking about and a photo of yourself before you hit submit. So if we come down here, here's the essay talks about that. The letter of recommendation talks about that and your photo. So you can read all that for all the specifics, Word and PDF format down here and the JPEG, PNG, GIF, all that stuff. So just keep that in mind. So here's your essay. They want you to upload your file and here's your letter of recommendation. Upload your file. Here's your photo. Upload your file and then boom, submit application and you could win up to $500. And again, this is something that you can do every single month. So you want to definitely take advantage of this opportunity. Start to think about ways that you can create some sort of project that will help the lives of other people and then think even broadly beyond that. How can I apply this information and project to other scholarships and other essays that I'm applying for as well and win even more money. You know, multiplying your efforts here so that you're not thinking just one essay, one project for one scholarship, but how can one thing that I do for this scholarship apply to other scholarships as well? Next, a 500 word essay could win you $2,000 to pay for college. So let's jump right in. The first financial bank financial goals scholarship and you could win $2,000. Now, if we scroll through their website here, it does say that they want to celebrate those who recognize the importance of pursuing education and financial goals with this scholarship. That is for $2,000 awarded to one winner each month. So every single month, this scholarship is going to be available to apply for uh, all the way through the end of the year, through December. So uh, if you are not able to apply this month, or if you skip a month, or if you miss a month, or if you do apply and don't win, every single month you can apply until you win. And they do say here, uh, if we go back, that uh, in order to enter, you're going to complete the entry form, which includes responding to a personal statement prompt 
in 500 words. And then optionally, you can post that you entered to Facebook or Instagram, but again, um, that's really just marketing for them. You don't have to do that. It says it's optional, um, so don't worry about that. But um, over here, when we do this, uh, the 500 word prompt is gonna be different every month. Um, or at least it can be. So they don't give you the prompt on this website, it's included in the actual application each time. So every single month when you're checking in and you're gonna apply, it'll be a different prompt. So just read the prompt, do your best to write the essay, but I can't give you the prompt right now because it's gonna keep changing throughout the year. Now, one thing to uh, note down here, uh, we're gonna go ahead, this is where you would enter, you just put your first and last name, email, and then it says enter, that gets you to the application where you would fill it all out. But we're gonna scroll through these past winners and down here into, this is all kind of legalese. This is the, the details, the specifics of the scholarship. So I'm gonna try to go through the important parts that you need to know. So down here on uh, the second one, promotion period, it says that it begins November 1st of 2020, and then it's continuing through December 31st of 2022. So it does specify that there are 26 monthly entry periods. That's every month starting on November through December of 2022. So you wanna to continue to do that here. They list them also starting again in November of 2020. And then here's the start date and end date of each month going all the way through ta -da, December of 2022. So your eligibility here is, it says it's open to residents of the United States who are 18 or older. So you have to be planning to enroll or currently enrolled in a college degree program. It says those uh, who are winners of the scholarship are not eligible to enter again. So pretty common there. If you do win the scholarship one month, you're no longer eligible to win anymore. And they say something else like you're only eligible to win it once in your lifetime. So uh, once you've won the scholarship, you can't keep applying, but you can apply every single month until you win. So that's pretty cool. It does say, as usual, if you're an affiliate or a sponsor or a parent or somehow employed with the actual company, then you're not eligible. That's all that that says. All right, and coming down here to number seven, uh, winner determination and verification. After reviewing all eligible entries received during the promotion period, the winner will be selected. Winners will be selected based off the entrance response to the prompt, which is what you would hope. <laughs> the bank will consider spelling, grammar, cre uh, detail, creativity, and thoroughness of each entry to select the winner, so keep that in mind. And then they say here that the winners will be notified and announced on or before the 15th of each month. Now it does say also that an entrance is not actually a winner of a prize, or even if they've been notified of being a winner, uh, basically until their eligibility has been and continues to be verified by the status, to the satisfaction of the sponsor, which is the bank. So you're not technically a winner until we've been able to verify all the information about who you are. Then once we've done that, then you're technically a winner, then we'll send you the money and all that sort of stuff. So it's basically saying like, you're the winner, but we have to verify it first. If you are who you say you are, then you have nothing to worry about there. But just want to draw your attention that it does say that. And then here it says that in the event that an entrant is disqualified for any reason, the foregoing process will be repeated until the prize is awarded or until three attempts have been made to award the prize and each attempt has failed. So they're basically they're gonna start with the person who won and if that person gets disqualified, they're gonna try three more times to award it to somebody. There is the potential that any given month if everybody they contact that has won uh, either doesn't reply or their verification process ends up disqualifying them, they could end up not awarding the scholarship any given month, but hopefully through four different people, uh, hopefully they would find somebody who actually is who they said they were and who responds. Uh, I wouldn't worry about that. They probably will every single month, but it's possible that they might not. So again, we'll scroll way up back to the top all the way here. So here's where you're gonna wanna go. You're gonna go here and put your first name, your last name, your email, and then hit enter scholarship. And that's gonna basically take you to the application form where you can fill out more information and the essay itself. 500 words or less could win you $2,000 and you get a chance every month. And in addition to scholarships, there are other ways to both pay for college by raising money to find to pay for college. And there are ways to pay less money for college because you can reduce the price. So those both work in tandem. And I have a course that explains all of that information. So if that interests you, then click on the link in the description to learn more. Or you can click on this playlist here for scholarship information and everything you need to know to be successful in your process of trying to pay for college. Or you can click this video here that YouTube thinks you need to watch next. Which is it going to be? Playlist? Video. Playlist? Video. Stay empowered and we'll see you next time.